Hey y'all, it's Kelly from Dixie Darlings and I'm back with another tutorial for y'all today. So it's been a minute, but I've been getting a lot of questions about templates. So you guys know that I love doing a template. I actually was doing a live with Kimberly Hobbs Taylor one night and I saw her put the template on top of regular vinyl. And then I watched how easily she put it on the cup. And she actually designed the template while it was laying right in front of her. And I thought, okay, if this works, this is genius. So I totally credit seeing Kimberly Hobbs Taylor doing this. And I did it and it was a game changer, y'all. So I thought if we put it over solid vinyl, why can't we put it over pattern vinyl? Y'all know I love a good pattern vinyl. So I started doing that and it started just a multitude of options here. It was like, not only could we do vinyl and, and foils and glitter, now it was like a quick way to combine it all in one. And then she does this great little bleach spot where you can do whatever color you want background and then it gives you the perfect location for your decal where it'll actually really pop in the template. And then I put the template on the cup. So I'm gonna show you guys how to do that. I've gotten a lot of questions about these. I've been using the Dixie Darlings tape, I love it. Um, it's specifically designed for foils. The foils really adhere to it. You can use it with glitter. You can use it with anything. Um, but I'm going to show you guys how I do it. And I'm actually going to go to Kimberly's website. I'm going to purchase a template. I'm screen recording all of this. I'm going to show you guys how I open up the email, how I download it, how I pull it into my design space, how I print it off, the different settings that I use, how I lay the template on the vinyl, how I cut the vinyl. I'm going to go into so much detail from start to finish on how to do this. And y'all, they are so quick and easy. So do not be intimidated by these templates. There are so many out there. I love Kimberly's because she's a Tumblr maker and you can tell all the details in it are things that she's really thought about as far as the maker end of it, instead of just the design aspect of it. So I love the detail that she provides. I love the little bleach spots. She actually has a template that you can download that's just the bleach splotch in different sizes. And I think it's just a fun little detail. So I'm gonna show you guys that as well today. So I hope that you enjoy it. You enjoy it. And y'all jump on over to my Dixie Darlings Facebook group. That's where I go live. We actually do, we try to do Fun Fall Friday. The summer's been a little bit out of whack. But I always go live on Sunday nights. We started doing Saturday mornings, Coffee with Kelly at 9 a.m. Eastern Time. Sunday nights, we do 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. And then anytime there's anything exciting going on, I try to jump on and go live. If you go to my website, DixieArlands.com, it'll pop up and give you an option to be notified um, through text message about things. And the only thing I notify is when I go live. So that's an easy way if you don't get Facebook notifications or TikTok or Instagram. That's a quick way that you can just see. Anytime I'm gonna go live <laughs> I try to pass it out to you guys so I will link all the products that I use in the description box below so make sure you check out those links as well as some discount codes I'll include for y'all so make sure you check those out don't miss those discount codes so thank y'all so much for watching I'm glad to be back and I hope you enjoy it Okay, y'all, we're going to start at khobbsdesigns.com. I'm going to look for the Waves template. I've used this one before in a 30 ounce, but I'm looking for it in a 20 ounce skinny straight. You can search by design, by size, by brand. I'm going to go up and search by brand um, based on the cup that I'm using here. I'm going to go down and find the size that I'm looking for. The Waves template here is what I'm going to do. I'm going to add that to my cart. I'm gonna check out and you can add as many as you want to. Make sure you use your code Kelly15 here in the discount code box. And then I'm gonna go to my emails and bam, it's there. The Kimberly Hobbs design download is ready. It gives me the option to download now. I hit the download button in the, you download again. And then in the upper corner, there's a little arrow that points down here. And I'm gonna click on that and it's gonna give me my file. Now this comes in a zip file, which you cannot directly pull into Cricut. So I'm gonna go in, I'm gonna open this zip file. I just basically tap on it. It gives me the folder. I keep all my templates in one folder on my um, iPad. So I'm gonna click that and I'm gonna move it to my templates because I just like to keep them all in there together. Then I actually go delete that zip file out since I've already opened that. And voila, now we're gonna go to Cricut. So when you go to Cricut, you can browse. I'm gonna go to a new canvas. Then I'm gonna do browse files. Now, because I know where mine are and they're recently used, it pops up here. But I'm actually gonna show you if I go to own my iPad or whatever device you're using, I click downloads and then I'm gonna search for templates. But because I have them saved in that templates folder, 
I'm actually going to search templates. Here it is. I can quickly go down to the KHT Waves Skinny Straight file here. I'm going to click on it. When I find it, I have lots of Kimberly Hobbs files, you can see. So when I find it, I'm actually going to click on that. And then I'm going to click on the one that I know will open in my design space. I'm going to save it as Waves 20 because it's going to upload it. That's just a quick way for me to find it, the name and the size. And then I'm going to save that. Now, when it comes in, it does have this attached to the bottom here that shows you what the sizing should be. This 9.312 by 8. Um, I'm actually going to ungroup it, and then I highlight all that and delete it. So it gets rid of that. Then I'm going to click on my actual image, and I'm going to make sure that it is sized correctly. That 9.3 by 8. And it is, so I'm going to click Make up here in the upper right-hand corner. Click Make It. I'm going to use a 12 by 12 mat. Then I hit Next. And then mine takes a minute. <laughs> so here where it says set material, I'm gonna go to all materials. I'm gonna go to settings. I'm gonna choose paper minus and where it says fine point blade, I'm gonna change my pressure from 190 to 300. You can also select more pressure. So I'm just gonna save that setting. I'm gonna X out and then I'm gonna click my paper minus. So that's what I use. I have an Air Explorer. You all, there's also a washi setting that some silhouette users use. You kind of just have to play around with it. And I would say just take your shape and put like a little circle or a little square and just practice a few times. If you're not familiar with doing it before you do a whole template, just take a little circle, enter it on your mat and see how it works. So I have printed this out. Now the blue side does go down on your mat. The shiny slick white side goes up. That's what you're actually cutting. So because it doesn't cut, obviously, in the shape that, that I'm going to need and the size, I'm going to go in with my paper trimmer and I'm just going to trim off the edges because there is a square box in the size that I need around the outside. So you're just going to trim that excess off, okay? So that's actually going to be your 9.3 by 8. So I'm just trimming off the excess on the, this is the Dixie Orleans tape that I've used. And that is where you want the blue side down the white shiny side up. They come in bigger sheets, and if you do 20 ounce uh, cups, the you are able to get two cuts out of a sheet, and then I just trim off this excess here. And I save the little edges for something later. So here, I'm gonna lay this down on pattern vinyl. This is a Banff pattern vinyl that I got at TumblrCon last week. I absolutely love it. I knew I wanted to use it. So I'm just taking the backing off of this double-sided tape, right? Because both sides are gonna be sticky. So I'm gonna take the back side off and I'm gonna lay that over my patterned vinyl. I have not done anything to my patterned vinyl. It just came in this 12 by 12 sheet. I'm simply taping, taking the Dixie Darlings tape that I have already cut in the template and I'm just gonna place that down on top of my patterned vinyl. So I haven't done anything to my patterned vinyl here. It literally is just the way it came. And I'm just taking my kind of little squeegee here that you would apply vinyl to different things with and I've pressed my template down. Now, you're gonna have to trim off the excess again. So I basically am gonna cut down to the exact same size as my template, my pattern vinyl. Because I like to save every little scrap of pattern, pattern vinyl I can, I'm gonna cut the large part off top. So see, that's a great little piece that I can use to cut a circle out for the bottom. And then this little side piece I've come to use as kind of a test run, and I'm gonna show you what I mean. So I save both those pieces, then I'm gonna trim off the bottom and the other side. I kind of tried to lay it down as square as I could so I wouldn't waste any vinyl and I basically just have that white border to cut off of two sides um, of my uh, template here. So I'm trimming that off. And then because I usually know what color foils I wanna use, and this you can see, it just had a little bit at the top. I know that it doesn't seem like it would matter, but I just kind of take my scissors and there's just a tiny little piece there that's kind of bothering me and I just want to trim it off under that template so it won't stick out. So because you really never know what a foil is going to look like on top of your pattern vinyl, I'm going to save my bigger piece and then I've got this little piece. Well, I also have an extra piece that I cut off of my template here of the double-sided tape, the Dixie Darlings tape here. So I'm going to actually take this, I'm going to peel off the back, I'm going to lay it on top of my pattern vinyl 
I'm just gonna take my X-Acto knife and I'm gonna make little slits. So basically I just have four or five different pieces of this so I can kind of play around with. Because before I actually do my entire template, I wanna see what all these foils are gonna look like over this pattern bottle. Because some of them are more sheer, some of them are semi-transparent. And I kinda of wanna get the look of my template before I actually ruin or use my whole template, right? So it just gives you an option to kinda of play around with this. I had been taking them and just kinda of laying them over and I thought, you know what, why don't we just take a sheet and take some of the foil and actually put it down on an extra piece and just see what it looks like. So I'm pretty sure I'm gonna use crystal ball that's a semi-transparent and it basically is not gonna cover up the design of the vinyl. That's the, I'm gonna use that on the part that I really want it to stay. It just gives it like a little bit of sparkle in there. So if you, it's hard to see on video, but it's just kind of got like a little crystal sparkle to it. So I'm gonna use that on the majority of my template that I want my vinyl to show through. And then I've got poolside, I've got hollow sea, I've got several different colors here. Um, I was gonna use this 3D lines. I actually, once I placed it on here, I did not necessarily like, I loved this foil, but I didn't like it in the design um, of the contrast of kind of the rolling waves. I just thought it was too straight. So you can kind of see, to me, this is just a good opportunity to kind of play around with different foils, see which ones you like. If you don't like any of them, lay you another strip down and kind of play again. So I just needed to see what my color scheme was gonna be here. I always go into it with thoughts in mind, but surprisingly, I do this almost every time I do a template now, and it usually changes my mind once I see it right directly up against the vinyl. So anyway, I'm gonna stop talking for a few minutes, and I'm just gonna let you guys see the process. I've tried to, to not speed up the majority of this tutorial, not cut anything out so you guys can really see um, what my process is. And when you see like foils like this, y'all, um, it's where I've used it on another template and I just kind of keep it all handy right there. <laughs> it just seems like instead of me having all these little pieces of foil everywhere, I just leave them on the roll and it's easier for me to manage a lot of times. So... Okay, I said I was gonna be quiet, but as I see things, I have to interject. <laughs> um, this is another one of my new faves. It's called Two Infinity, and it's a semi-transparent. Um, it covered up a little bit too much of the design pattern here from the pattern vinyl underneath, but I still do love it. I do love that. And you can see, so this one I ended up, um, oh, and I'll have to go, it's called Zoomies. And see how that one just seemed to flow better with the pattern of the vinyl than the straight lines. So that kind of, if that helps you guys understand why I went with one over the other. And now I'm actually just gonna start peeling back here the top layer that was covering the template. And I'll just add one color at a time. Now I actually did not have this happen doing this template, but a lot of times you'll have foils that will stick better than others. And they kind of, if you lay one down and then you do your second one, and then say you go into your third foil and it wants to stick over the top of the ones that you've already done. A little trick of the trade that I've learned is I actually take painter's tape and if you'll just stick it, but you also could take like the little roller things that you use on your clothes and roll it across and it'll pick up that excess. So I have ruined a lot of templates without that little hack and thought, gosh, you know, like I should have used this foil first or I should have used that foil and it covered up this one and I don't like how it ended up. Now, <laughs> with that little hack, game changer. I hardly ever ruin a template anymore. So this one, there was no really reason why I started with one or the other. It was really like I wanted to do one color in the center and then do like, I'm gonna do this one, this zoomies, I'm gonna do one on either side. So I have the one in the center, and then I'm gonna do two, 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 and two, if that makes sense. So instead of doing every one of them a different color, I thought, let me keep it a little more basic than that. And then this is just a clay dotting tool here that has a silicone tip on one end, and it has a little metal tip on the other, and it just kind of gives you that fine line. It's definitely not something that you would have to do. And I try to keep that tool to the very outside edges, because if you actually go over your foil, sometimes it'll scratch it and you'll be able to see it. So I try to just do it with my finger or a squeegee or my burnishing stick very slowly over the main parts of the foil, and then only use this dotting tool 
when I'm doing the very edge, just right up against that seam. So it just kind of gives you that fine line um, right on the edges of where the templates, the top cover is still laying down on the template. So you can see I've done this really beautiful waterfall color in the center that's a great teal turquoise color and then I did zoomies and now I'm going to do, I believe this is poolside um, that I think was such a pretty kind of that teal blue watery looking color um, and again this can be one that's a little bit um, touchier to do but I try not to scratch it and I try just to do like a smooth action across the main parts and then just keep my dotting tool to right along the edge. And then you can see anywhere if you pull it up um, and you see that it's not you know it hasn't transferred as well as you want it to i just try to use my finger just to kind of lightly apply a little pressure here um, it seems to keep the foil more consistent in the way that it looks if you do it that way versus changing what tools you're using or kind of changing it up so i believe this is the last color here i'm trying to think here <laughs> it's been a minute actually this is not the last color um the next one i'm going to use here is um I guess this is Zoomies, yeah. The first one I used was Fine Eyes. <laughs> so I apologize, this one's Zoomies. Y'all, and look how pretty it is. I wanted to leave this in here because so many times when we use these foils, you see the little bits and pieces of it, but like, look at this one as a whole. And I'll be honest with y'all, when I'm under the lights recording this, sometimes it's hard for me to even see. And when I go back and watch the videos of it, I'm like, oh my gosh, a cup would be so pretty, totally wrapped. Just a full wrap with that. You wouldn't even have to do a template or a piece. I'm just like, oh my goodness, this is one of them I've totally kind of overlooked a little bit here. Okay, then I'm gonna go into my last one, which is Hollow Sea, I believe is the name of the color. Um, I will have, have all the actual names uh, listed in the description box, y'all. Sometimes there's just so many I can't keep up and can't remember. But this one's a really pretty color. I'm pretty sure it's hollow C. But another one, look how when you're right on top of it, you don't really notice the holographicness of it. So this is another one that when I was going back and editing the video, I was like, man, like I need to do a full wrap with that. <laughs> and add a little sparkle over it. Oh my goodness, it would be so pretty. If I did this foil in a template over an opal, one of those really pretty white opals or blue opals, I'm like, oh my goodness, it would be crazy what it would look like. So stay tuned because when I go back and edit videos, I always see things that I don't see when you're right there, you know, on top of the foil sometimes. So I'm just gonna start it right on the, on the edge, pull this one off. This one transfers really pretty and you can see again, anywhere that I'm anticipating that it doesn't stick really well, I just kind of take my finger and rub it right over to make sure I don't scratch, especially some of the solid colors. They're a little bit more touchy um, than that. So now I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna do this crystal ball and here we have the majority of our vinyl and I want it to show through. That's why I'm just gonna use this crystal ball because it just adds a little sparkle. You can see it's kind of way more of a semi-transparent here. It has like a little silver sparkle on it. Um, I'm trying to get Cindy at Southern Bell Glitter to do a gold version of this, y'all, because I think it would be so cool. I use this one all the time. Um, you can see over the white part here how it would look, because um, I know this video is hard. It doesn't capture it really well. And because of this pattern, I've got a little crease right there, but you know what? It's not even going to matter because of the pattern. Um, it's so random there. And I'm just going to take my little squeegee here, press it down, make sure it's getting all the areas, especially on these clear ones. Just kind of, uh, I like to double check just so nothing else sticks to it. And then sometimes when you want to pull it back, it wants to pull the vinyl up with it. You just kind of can separate it at the corner and uh, it'll separate real easy. And I just kind of press the vinyl back down and then pull the foil away from it on the top. And then here I'm just going in and trying to make sure that all the areas around my little bleach spot are filled in with my crystal ball here. And then I'm gonna go in with a pearlescent. So she does have a stark white, or you could use glitter, or you could use whatever. I like this pearlescent because even though it looks like it's gonna be a stark white, it's really not. And I just like things to blend in, y'all, you know? <laughs> like, I don't wanna have a stark white bleach spot, but you definitely can to make your 
um, decal pop really good. Here again, it's a solid color, so it's not really gonna matter that there's a little crease there. So y'all don't freak out or don't be intimidated. See, I do stuff like that all the time. <laughs> and then I just take a little area right here. And you can see, I'm just gonna press it down and it'll fill in all those little areas that didn't. So you can see it gives me like a little bit of background to it, but it's not that stark white. So that's really what I wanted here. I wanted to blend it. This is Miley foil dust. I'm just going in and putting a little bit over it. I take a glove and just kind of rub it all over my tip. Template. It just kind of fills in any little areas and that would normally be sticky that maybe the foils didn't cover. So uh, people think that the foils repel epoxy. It's actually not. It's the adhesive. So just to avoid that happening, I found that this foil dust works really real wonders. I just take a makeup brush. I'm just going to dust it off. It comes off really easy. Um, it does kind of get everywhere, but, and I'm, I'm, I don't like messy, but I do love this stuff. And you can kind of see, I just take the brush and just brush it off and it's just filling it in. And on this, it just gives it a little extra sparkle in different places. So there's a little place at the top um you can see it kind of filled in that and just added like a little silver sparkle and now i'm just going to go in and i'm going to take my bamp decal and i'm going to lay it right on here and y'all boom look at the design that you have i mean this stay wild ocean child it shows up it just has a little bit of pearlescent in the background and now i'm going to wrap it on the cut i just think it turns out so pretty it gives it so much depth and y'all it really you can see it did not take me that long so I'm actually gonna use um, a skinny straight with a handle here. This is a 20 ounce. And you can kind of see, I'm just gonna wrap it around and I'm just gonna show y'all. I do not know how to describe this. <laughs> I have spray painted the handle and the bottom um, white with Rust-Oleum's 2X. I didn't spray paint the whole cup, I'll be honest, just because at the last minute I decided I wanted to have white under there instead of silver. So, and I knew those were the only places that were gonna show through because the vinyl is uh, opaque. So I've laid it against there. I'm just taking my craft knife and I'm running it on both sides of the handles. There may be more technical ways to do this, y'all. This is just what always works for me. And I want this template, I want the seam to meet at the back side of the handle. So if you're a visual learner like me, sometimes it's just easier to show y'all than try to put it in words. So you can see here, I've just cut these little slits. I've run my craft knife on the top side of the handle, on the bottom side of the handle, same thing. So you get these little notches. I'm just carefully rolling my cup over and I'm gonna take scissors and I'm just gonna cut those little notches out right where my handles are gonna be. It's not precise, but you know what? It's precise enough that you're never gonna see it when we get this wrapped on the handle. So I'm gonna peel the back of my vinyl off now, right? So we have the Dixie Darlings tape, this double-sided. It's on top of the vinyl. So here we just have vinyl. So you're basically gonna wrap this on a cup just like you would a sheet of vinyl. I'm trimming off this little edge here before I make a big mess and pull off the whole back. I'm gonna roll my cup back over. It should pretty much be lined up here with my handles. I'm going to press the vinyl down. And what I like about this, because if y'all have done templates with double-sided tape, the, even the Dixie Darlings tape, if you get it on there, it's really hard to get it off and get it back on. When you have vinyl, and say it doesn't line up just like you want it to, like right here, see, I just pull that right up. Look how easy it is for me to adjust if it was off just a little bit. So I feel like my seams line up so much better with these templates with the Dixie Darlings tape when I put them on vinyl because it's so much easier to adjust it once you go to put it on the cup. And boom, there you go. So my seams are much better. I'm gonna turn this over. You can see I just kind of take that backing and as I'm pressing the vinyl down on the cup, it allows the backing to come off at the same time. And just any little areas that I just like to double check. I don't wanna have to pull this whole sheet off again. <laughs> so I'm just gonna press the vinyl down. You can see there's one little area that I kind of noticed a little bubble. I'm gonna go back and press it down and see how easy that is would be so hard to do y'all if you were just doing this with the Dixie Darlings tape or any kind of template with a double-sided adhesive. Once it goes on that vinyl, it makes it so much more durable to work with is what I have found. So. I'm just gonna continue to press it around. I love how this turned out, y'all. I knew as soon as I saw this vinyl, I was gonna love it. And then the foils just kind of played nicely into the design. So I'm just gonna go ahead and continue to press that around. Okay, so my seam is meeting at the back of the handle. But look, you see there's a little bit of lift beside the handle. I'm gonna show you that all you have to do is take one little slit. So I'm gonna show y'all, I'm gonna take my craft knife here. 
and I'm just going to, y'all know I have to have my pot holder to keep my cup still. <laughs> so I just make one little slit right there and it just lays down perfectly. So I'm gonna do that at the top of the handle. My seam meets perfectly here. Um, I wanted it to meet right at the back of the handle here. And I think it came together very nicely. So I love how this turned out. Um, I am gonna go in and I'm gonna show y'all. Okay, so where I'd actually cut those notches out, there was a little bit of vinyl there. Take your craft knife and lay it flush against the cup and you can just run right around that handle. Does that make sense? Like craft knife, see how I just lay it flush and then I'm not trying to cut into it. It only takes off the extra on top of it. So here again, I'm gonna use every little strip of vinyl I have. I'm gonna lay a piece of this down on the handle. So this is how I do it, y'all. Again, probably a more precise way, but this is the way Kelly does it. Um, I'm just gonna trim a little piece at the top here about the width that I want. Again, I'm gonna go in and take my straight vinyl cutter and I'm just gonna make a cut for this piece that's, that, you know, that's the same width. And it allows me to, again, utilize my extra vinyl here. It cuts a straight line. So I have this perfect little piece. I'm gonna take, um, peel back the very end of it and place it on my handle. And y'all, it's really so easy just to add a little detail here to this using your extra vinyl um, because it's square on both sides, you know, the same width. I'm just gonna place that down right on the top of the handle here. And because it's vinyl, it gives you a little bit of durability to play with it again. And boom, you just lay it right down. It covers up the handle. I'm gonna press it down where I make sure it's really, is good on, good on the handle really good. Sorry, all my words are getting off. I got a lot of words in this tutorial today. And then I'm gonna take my craft knife and I'm gonna press it down right in that seam and I'm just gonna cut it right up against the cup. So I've tried measuring it out and doing all that stuff and it never comes out as perfect as if I just do it on the cup. I can tell y'all that. So I am gonna go in and add some details. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit more foil over the handle and on the bottom probably, but I'm gonna go ahead now and add a coat of epoxy. So I will tell y'all that I am using Flynn Sisters epoxy here. Um, I have used her epoxy and fallen in love with it. So I'm gonna be honest. This is actually her Fast Cure. Um, just because this is not my final coat, I needed to add some details. I mixed up 20 milliliters here and I'm adding it. You can see I make sure to get on the back side of the handle, my handle really well. Stop your cup if you need to. Um, but, uh, you know, make sure you get at the top and the bottom and around and all those areas. Like I said, I am going to go back and add a little foil detail, but I wanted to get a coat on there just to kind of protect what's on there, see what needs to be touched up and then go to plan B. But y'all really, you don't even have to do anything beyond this. I mean, you could add a little vinyl to the bottom on this coat, add some epoxy and boom, you're done. And I feel like there looks like so much depth in these templates. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I am going to show you the final design. Um, I do go over a lot of detail on my Facebook group. So please watch it. Here you can see that sparkle that that crystal ball adds over the vinyl. Just a perfect little sparkle. So um, I hope that you enjoyed it um, and I'll see y'all again soon.